Hey, Newt. How's it going? Better than you. Uh, do you? You're not taking losing your other show so well, are you? No, I'm taking it really well. What? What? I just, you know, I went from hanging out in a video store talking movies with friends, and now I'm hanging out in a video store talking movies with friends with way less views. It's going really well. I love it. Wishmaster from Wish. Wes Craven presents Wishmaster. This, and this is when Wes Craven kind of had some clout. This was post yeah. Scream. Yeah. Because remember, before this, there was Wes Craven presents movies like the remake of Carnival of Souls with Bobby Phillips. Do you remember? Is that any good? I don't remember no, if I saw it. Okay. It's terrible. But I, I had the a, original. And I had a big thing for her though. Yes. Yeah. You know that '90s thing. Yeah. But no, uh, I this I saw this in the theater in 1997. Yeah. And I don't think I've seen it until you told me, hey, let's review Wishmaster. Yeah, so I really like this movie. I saw it as a kid mm -hmm. on video. I remember seeing the trailers and thinking it looked awesome. Yeah. I, I think you were the same. Our mm -hmm. parents let us yeah. do anything. They didn't care. As long as it wasn't like realistic violence mm -hmm. or like r too much nudity, it was pretty much But fine. look how well we grew up and adjusted. We turned out fine. So Wishmaster, I saw it on uh, VHS afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I really, really liked it. Now, speaking of VHS, what's going on with the cover? I don't it's, like the cover. It's funny, too, because I looked it up on Amazon yeah. to watch it, and I was like, oh, I don't remember it looking like that. It looks like it would be a vampire movie. Yeah, that straight up looks like a vampire. Yeah. It doesn't look like Andrew Divoff, the no. guy who plays the Were they, going, they show him on the back. You know, yeah, and but he looks like uh, Norman Osborn. Yeah. A little bit, like yeah. the Alex Ross version of him. Yeah. So, yeah, I, if I was scrolling through, I, I probably wouldn't pick that up based on the cover. Yeah. But, so, I like I said, I haven't seen this movie since 1997. Yeah. yeah. And I really, and I don't, don't remember liking it then, yeah. but I really liked it now. I've watched it a couple times over the years, uh, and I rewatched it because it was on Prime. Mm-hmm. I mean, I watched it here in the video store in the video on VHS. Store on VHS, yes. yes. The in VHS, VCR. which starts with a Blockbuster commercial saying, please go to Blockbuster. Saw <laughs> uh, it. Don't want to see it. Coming on in 20 minutes. Can't wait around to see it. Man, it is. Video, it's the only way to get what you want to watch when you want to watch it. This was great. Yeah. And this was supposed to be like the next big monster. Yeah. And uh, we talked about it. It's got like all these legends of like horror in it. Yeah. Like Robert Englund. We'll go through the yeah, list. Yeah, we'll go but, through the list. But yeah, it, 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 it had the unfortunate positioning of coming out after Scream. Yes. And you, if this movie would have came out in 1988. Yeah. It would have been as there, we'd be on Wishmaster thirteen right now. If he would have gone to space by this point, <laughs> if the effects looked as good as this, which I don't think they would have no, in nineteen eighty eight, yeah. but because uh, it's definitely trying to be like the next Freddy Krueger mm -hmm. or Pinhead. Yeah, unfortunately, those two franchises, New Nightmare is more like a spinoff than yeah. it is a sequel. Like they were on their way out. Yeah. like I think after four, Pinhead went right and, to video. Yeah, because by this point. He, they wanted slashers. Yeah, Hellraiser was on VHS. Yeah. Uh, uh, Candyman was on VHS yeah. at this point. The Warlock series. So this never really got. Yeah. You know, it it never popped. And I went back and I, when we watched it, I watched it again. And I was like, oh man, they could have done so much cool stuff with this. Because yeah. first off, it's directed by Robert, oh, Robert, Robert Kirkman. Yes. Kirk, yeah, who's a who's the K in K and B, <laughs> and it it looks and feels like an. A special effects guy directing a movie. Yes, uh, like uh, another thing recently, it's kind of like how John Wick was a movie made by stunt guys. Exactly. This so, is a movie made by effects guys that's not as bad as Harbinger Down. Yes. But this looks, <laughs> this movie looks great. Because it was all these gags that they probably wanted to yeah. do, you know. Um, skip it ahead, Robert Kurtzman is in the movie. Yes. He's the piano victim guy. We both watch the yeah, special yep, features. Mm -hmm. So he had a a uh, head of his that was meant for like two other movies mm -hmm. that never got used so he finally got to put use put it in this one a prop and you head. could always you could always tell when there's a cameo like that cuz they get a really gr it's yeah. always in all these kind of movies yeah. they get the grizzly kill yeah. so um i guess we should start at the yeah, beginning yeah we'll go through our notes yeah. we have our <laughs> notes in chronological order mm -hmm. Three it's pages. not going to be quite a recap of just what happens in the movie we're no gonna, it's we're going to go shot, into stuff shot for shot we're going <laughs> to gus van zant the wishmaster yeah. movie so who kicks off this mu movie music So the wise. music is by Harry Manfredini. 
who yep. did, um, you know, the Friday the 13th series. He yes. also did my friend Eric Wilkinson's violence movie, oh. which is out. He, uh, Eric uh, and his brothers made, um, and his brother <laughs> made a movie on VHS in yeah. the 80s when they were teenagers. Now he's a distributor of, like, movies. <laughs> so he got Harry Manford and Didi to score his movie he made when he was a kid, and now it's available on DVD. It's somewhere in this totally real video store. Yes, yes. You, I think you it's know. right there, actually. Um, so... This movie is littered with not just cameos, because some of them play yeah. bigger parts, but mm -hmm. there are cameos and appearances by other horror people. Yeah. The opening narration is Agnes Scrim, who yep. did the tall man. From the Phantasm, Phantasm. series. And also I, from, uh, yeah. uh, what was that movie, that show with Jennifer Garner? Oh, I know. Alias. Oh, Alias. He was on Alias. He was as on well. Alias. Yeah. <laughs> I remember putting in the VHS, I, his narration scared yeah. me. Before anything even happened, mm -hmm. because I didn't see Phantasm yeah. yet. Fear one thing only in all that is. Fear the gin. His voice terrified me, and for years I thought it was just the gin's voice. Yeah. And then I looked it up, like, oh, that's Agnes Scrim. Every, just anytime anyone says boy, I automatically hear it in that. <laughs> boy. No, my plan was for us to get a bottle of gin for every time we say gin, but we Damn couldn't, it, I forgot. We couldn't find one. But if we did that, we yeah. would probably die of liver cancer yes. by the middle of this review. <laughs> uh, if you want to play a drinking game, drink every time they say gin or wish. Yes. Uh, speaking of wish, we'll go down by the wishes. The mm -hmm. first wish, it opens up in Persia. Yeah. 11 something mm -hmm. 80, 1100 80 yeah. or whatever. Uh, and um, the, 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 we don't know what his first wish was, but mm -hmm. the, the emperor, the, the, the Ayatollah, I don't yeah. know, whatever it was the back Ayatollah then. The Ayatollah rock and roller. The yeah. Persian <laughs> king guy. The Prince of Persia. Yeah, he, exactly, Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal. His second wish to the djinn is uh, show me wonders. Yeah. And this is just an excuse for the djinn to just do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Like, this movie hits you hard with the special effects. Cause he, yeah, he says like, I wanna, you know, the, and it's like a crazy monster party. Yeah, and there's that's his like, definition of wonder. Yeah, so there's like a dude whose guts come out and like make yeah. a monster that is like eating a girl. Yeah. There's a guy who gets like thrown into a wall and turned into stone. Uh, the, the, the skeleton is my favorite part. <laughs> to, so explain what that is. Okay, like, okay. So a guy's like, ah, oh, help. Oh, there, before that, there's yeah. a uh, wizard that Oh the yeah, sorcerer yeah, I guess that, that stuff's important too. Yeah, you know? <laughs> uh, so he like grabs the sorcerer and he's like, help! And then he falls down and his skeleton rips out of his body. <laughs> and attacks the other and dude. And then he just attacks the guy, it turns into a CG skeleton and yeah. then it attacks the But dude. the skeleton puppet coming out, yeah. because they also did Army of Army Darkness, of Darkness yeah. reminded me of that. So Here, and Here's my thing though, real quick, just yeah. a side rant. I don't think skeletons are scary, because it's like, oh no, it's... A human without any of the stuff that makes humans strong. It's like, oh, he has no muscle. It's you probably gonna be really easy push to push him over and then just walk out of the temple and yeah. like, why did the, we go to this? The one that really creeped me out when I was a kid was the the girl was turning into a tree. Yeah, like you just hear the sound effect mm -hmm. when she turns. And there's like the now. stuff coming yeah. out. Yeah, and, and there's the snake guy. The snake or was guy. He a gator. I think it was both. It was okay. They're, they're both reptiles. Yeah, snake. He, he grabs the sorcerer mm -hmm. and he goes, "Stop him!" And he goes. Help us! <laughs> See, it's a little, little touches like that. Yeah. You can tell somebody who's in the horror industry, and there's so many little gags yeah. in this movie that, you know, are yeah. like that, you know? And I, I will give credit, uh, all the Persians who you see close up actually look Middle Eastern. Yes. Which for 1997, I was shocked. That's I'm like, saying oh, wow, something. that's really... Well, because you had the remake of Aladdin recently, and I yeah. was saying to somebody, I was like, 10 years ago, if they made that, Disney would have just Jake told, told no, no, well, yeah, they would have just told, uh, uh, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal, go get a tan, you know, yeah, that's yeah, what it would yeah. be. So, uh, yeah. so I don't know if they were Persian, but they, they were at least were able to pull it off, much yeah. like I pulled off Aladdin. Ex well, yes, totally, <laughs> and didn't get canceled. <laughs> um, so classic horror movie thing is you build up to your monster, mm -hmm. don't show your monster in the first 20 minutes, and that's usually a good idea, it usually works, yeah, but when your effect is this good. Just show them. Oh, just throw every, like you have your narration and then it yeah. just goes boom right into yeah. Mad Monster Party. Yeah, but like, I, usually I thought maybe like, you know, they'll show his human mm -hmm. form and then he'll turn into, no, nope. like, oh, there he there is. There he is. Jin. That's what he looks like. And it's perfect. Yeah. It, it helps like, the, actually no, any lighting in this movie, he looks perfect. Yeah, I, I, I felt like some of the scenes, because you could re tell that they're using some of the same hallways over and over again. Yeah. You could address okay. them down a little bit more. Yeah. But I liked, I didn't like his his look when I was a kid, but it really, from watching it again, I was like, 
Oh, that was really so cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then it skips ahead. He the, the sorcerer traps him in a ruby yeah. gem thing. Yep. Uh, flash forward, uh, Robert Englund and Ted Raimi. Yep. They're, they're bringing the statue of Ahura Mazda. And Robert Englund was so excited, he had to go to the dock and see it. His statue being delivered. Yeah, and who, who screws it up, Newt? Oh, Joe uh, Joe Pilato from uh, Dawn of the Dead. Day of or the Day of the Dead. Well, well he's he in, in Dawn, Dawn of the, of the Dead. Dead, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> European or director's cut mm -hmm. he's in. Yep. Um, yeah, Joe Pilato's drinking on the job. Yep, and just he lets he knocks his coffee over, yeah. and the thing falls and yeah. just smashes Ted Raimi. This, this movie is so over the top yeah. for you. Like, <laughs> like skip it ahead a little bit. Uh, skip it ahead a lot. But just giving you an example of like what kind of gore you're getting in here. Some girl turns into gas and mm. glass and explodes. Yeah, and it's not just. Uh, they make sure to show you a guy get his face his side of his healed. face ripped completely off. Yeah, and that was after she says, "Oh, you can see right through me." Yeah, yeah. and turns into glass. But we'll get back to that. But like, <laughs> so this you could have just showed the thing falling and cut to a reaction mm -hmm. shot, or like show the thing fall and have the blood pour out. Yeah. But no, they just show him get squashed. Smash. Yeah, because uh, the first time I saw it, I was like, "Oh, it's Ted Raimi," you know. And yeah. then I was like, "Oh, he's gone that quickly," but you know. So then <laughs> we, we get like a, a dock worker finds mm -hmm. the ruby or whatever, yeah. pockets it. Gives it to a pawn shop guy mm -hmm. who brings it to the gem jewelry yeah. people. Who the the head of that store is Hulk Hogan's friend in Thunder and Paradise. Yes, yep. I saw mm -hmm. in your notes, I was like, oh my god, that is. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> but like, uh, so this is where he gets a little confused. So Alex is our main character. Mm -hmm. Her and her sister both work for this store. Yeah. She like breathes on the thing and rubs it. So now she has a connection to it, and that's yeah. the one element that I could have taken out of the movie yeah. and been okay with. Uh, by the way, like, you're telling me. The dock hand guy and the pawn guy just happened not to release yeah. it. I'm like, bullshit. Yeah, exactly. They would have been like rubbing it to try to clean it. They would have got him out. No, you said Alexandra is uh, is not Jerry Ryan. She is not. I I said that she's also not Linda Hamilton or <laughs> Kira from Dark Crystal. Because <laughs> like when I was watching, when mm. I went to rewatch this, I'm like, oh yeah, Jerry Ryan was in that movie, yeah. wasn't she? And then I look, I'm like, that's not Jerry no, Ryan. No, not at all. Good actress, but like she does look kind of like both oh, of those. Oh, all of them, yeah. So, but and a lot of like waking up acting. Yeah. There's a lot of waking up acting yeah. in this movie. <laughs> uh, she's good in this, uh, although there's one part of her performance that didn't ring true to me. Yes. When she's uh, coaching the girls' basketball team, mm -hmm. she's giving this big motivational speech on how to do it. Now, my mom was a basketball coach. And that was a very different type of coach. And she would just yell at my sister and all these young girls mm -hmm. to do better. Cause my mom was a like amazing athlete and she wanted everyone to be like her well, and clearly she had a that, problem. Clearly that went in the family. Like <laughs> it skipped me, uh, it skipped me. Uh, so she would just vent all her frustrations onto these girls. She had super high expectations, not realizing that kids Little League stuff, it's just babies. <laughs> oh, we should recut scenes of your mom coaching in with this thing. And Come on! It's just all these kids like... <laughs> uh, so Alex has like a... Not a really... A friendship with a guy yeah. she plays tennis with. And yeah. He clearly wants to date her. Mm -hmm. And she's like, nah. Yeah. She's, he's friend-zoned. Oh, it's sad too because yeah. you're... And you're he's, oh, yeah, poor Because she's like, hey, I would date you, but I'm not. We're buddies. Come on. Yeah. Hey. So she gives the gem to him because mm -hmm. she thinks there's something wrong with it because she saw like visions or whatever. Yeah. So he technically unleashes the gin. I yes. want to point that out, right? Yeah. In but his in his lab accident where he could he had a chance of either yeah. unleashing the gin, yeah. becoming Dark Man, <laughs> or becoming 1990 John Wesley ship Flash. Ugh. Okay. Rest in peace. The 1990 Flash died in the Crisis crossover. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it yet. Oh. So thanks. <laughs> well, he died. <laughs> whatever, he's good. That actor's still, there's going to be 10 other flashes. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Uh, Ezra Miller choked a chick and he still gets a bit of flash. <laughs> so she, uh, so he f technically frees the gin, but mm -hmm. since she's calling on the voicemail. Yeah. The gin, who is Vern Troyer now, it's a baby gin. Which, yeah, when I, I was like, is that Vern Troyer? <laughs> and I scrolled through to the end, I was like, it's Vern Troyer. Yeah. Good for him. That really, uh, that's another one when I was a kid, I'm like, that was like, oh my God, yeah. that's horrible. Like this <laughs> demonic baby. So this is when we get our uh, next wish, which is, uh, do, he go, he, the Wishmaster, the gin, mm. he really likes to 
with people. Yeah. He's like, do you wish you would be released from this pain? Wink, wink. And he's like, yeah. So then he kills the yeah. guy. <laughs> and then he turns into Walter Felon mm -hmm. from he was Dr. Satan. Courses. Yeah, yeah. Who I saw recently in Astronomicon because mm -hmm. he's the Terrifier clown, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's like really thin. So when the Jin becomes an adult at first, they got mm -hmm. like a real thin guy yeah. to play him. Uh, <laughs> and then we get... Um, Rico Ross. Oh, from Aliens, yeah. He played right. Frost in Aliens. Mm -hmm. uh, he's good in I wish he was in more stuff that I saw. He's like, a, he's a good actor. Yeah. It just, it, it's yeah. one of those people who you just know from things. You go, oh, it's that guy. Yeah. You know? So he, like, just is investigating it. He yeah. comes back later. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to point it out because it's another hard. Yeah. Then and one of my favorites <laughs> shows up. I was, I totally forgot that Buck Flowers in this movie. Now, you, if you don't know who he is, he's in a million movies. He's, yes. he's in Back to the Future 2 yes. as the bum. He's, uh, go through his IMDb, he's been a bum in a million yeah. things. But I mean, like, I loved him in uh, Sorority Babes and a Slimeball Bolorama, yeah. which is a David Dakota film. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like, oh my god, Buck Flowers. I, I love what he's in. But I wanted to, I, I wrote down <laughs> his line here. Yeah. You big bald-headed baboon. Uh... <laughs> Miscom what is that? Mis Miscomplected afterbirth, afterbirth of a, of a Chinese, Chinese gangbang gang educated idiot. So that's a line that was said in yeah. a movie. After the pharmacist kicks him out, who was played by Reggie, Reggie Bannister. Bam yeah, Bam. yep. So, you know, yeah. and then Tom Savini is also in that yes. scene. And we were trying to, I was like, is that him? Because he's dressed the same There's as in. There's one from guy who looks like Tom, but then it's not him. But he's, he's in the beginning. In he's, or he's when. Yeah. When Reggie Bannister's on the ground, yeah. he's the one right here. He's dressed exactly like he is in uh, From oh, Dust okay. Till Dawn. So, okay. yeah. Uh, so then the next wish happens. The j the Jin is now Andrew Divoff again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got, like, bum clothes on. Yeah. And he's like, I kind of like what they did, too. He's got the hood on, and the, the string comes right here. It yeah. looks very, like, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of cool. So he uh, gets a wish. Yeah, so... The Jin can just grant wishes to anybody, yeah, there's but he no... needs three specifically from the person who released him to mm -hmm. take over the world. Yeah. But other than that, he just grant wishes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Buck Flower wishes for the guy to get cancer and die. Oh yeah, because so he's a homeless guy. He yeah. was trying to follow a lady inside the pharmacy. Yeah. And the owner of the pharmacy is like, "Hey, you got to get out of here." And he's just like, "I don't got to do nothing." He's like, <laughs> "It's private, you know." So yeah. so yeah, he kicks him out. Yeah. And then the gin comes to him and he's smoking a cigarette and he's like, "What do you want?" And he's like, "Well, I wish that guy would get cancer." Yeah. So then yeah. he just gets, gets cancer. cancer. <laughs> Turns into like an animatronic. Like, yeah, it's, it's and horrifying. It's pretty terrible. But um, it gets confusing afterwards though, because I'm confused by like the knowledge the gin has. Yes, because he's been imprisoned since. Ancient Persia, mm -hmm. pre-Islamic Persia. Yeah, I think? he says pre-Islamic. Persia. Yeah, pre-Islamic. Yep. Um, so he's been away for a yeah. while, and it's not even like he's frozen in a museum and he can watch yeah. society. He's been in a statue. Yeah, his gem was placed in a statue. Yeah. Now he, like, first off, he picks up a cigarette, and just knows what it is. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so maybe he has some psychic stuff. And then throughout the film, he's dropping references. He's like the Aladdin genie. Exactly. But like more more evil. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, he might have some kind of psychic stuff. Mm -hmm. But his struggle throughout the film is he can't figure out where the girl lives. Yeah. So he has to like go to her boss and ask for her address, go to the cop. I'm like, all right, well, so what are the limits of his knowledge? He knows how to do, like, uh, he knows how cell phones, like how he, to... He knows cell phones, yeah. cigarettes, uh, he can he reference... Says, he says, like, now you're fucked. Yeah. And I was like, I'm pretty sure they didn't say that in yeah. pre-Islamic. Yeah, he knows, um... What you got? He knows uh, Burnham, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, the shit just hit the fan. Did he watch Airplane? Now, like that <laughs> could have been a saying. We don't know. <laughs> I'm not a historian. So that, like, really, like, that part of me, like, that could have been just addressed a little bit. Like, yeah. what are the limits of his psychic powers? <laughs> uh, so then we, so the guy dies. Mm -hmm. Alex is sad. We find out, and this cracked me up. My girlfriend pointed this yeah. out to me. Uh, she's sad because her family, there was a fire at their house. Yeah. She saved her sister, but not her parents. Mm -hmm. and she feels super, super guilty. Yeah. And you know what? It is her fault because then we see her wake up from a dream sequence and we see that she has lit candles 
at the edge of her bed. So she oh, goes to sleep. Yeah. With I'm like, you probably did kill your parents. Yeah, make me clean my room. I couldn't believe it. It was like <laughs> right after each other. I'm like, oh my God, she's falling asleep with candles. Like, did, did the person, did the set decorator not read the script? Someone should have been like, hey, this character like has a thing it's with a fire. Whole thing. Yeah, it keeps popping up when she keeps, like even later with the painting of her sister when yeah. it goes on night gallery. So yeah. yeah I, you know what? I thought the parents thing was going to pop up in a different way. Uh, I thought she was gonna be like, I wish my parents were back, and then it'd just be the They're corpses. Like, they yeah. look like the things in Beetlejuice in the yeah. waiting room. <laughs> but instead, it plays into the hostage yeah. thing later. Uh, so she <laughs> visits Robert <laughs> England to learn more about the statue. Like you do. And I love when she's like, I'm so sorry what happened. Mr. Beaumont, I'm so sorry about what happened. Yes, irreplaceable, one of a kind. We are talking about Ed Finney, your assistant, right? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Robert England is so great. He takes like a pause and he's like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he had to remember who Ted Raimi was. And that's the thing, like he's he's a really good actor and I really he like is. him and stuff. And he's not playing Freddy in this. Cause yeah. a lot of times you see him and stuff and he's doing a variation. Did you of ever see him in Zombie Strippers? No, I, oh that's with Jenna Jameson. Yeah, if I remember right, I think he played like a really stereotypical like oh. uh, gay character. In oh, that. great! If I remember right, I think that was his performance. So it was a lot like uh, you can watch the review for Nightmare on Elm Street Two. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, watch that the one. Movies did. Uh, there's a, another classic cameo in this scene. The the Pazuzu. Oh, the statue Pazuzu statue. Yep. From X, a smaller version mm -hmm. of it, but it's still Pazuzu. I'm like, oh, it's Pazuzu. I was looking it. around in there to see if there's other ones because it would have yeah. been awesome if like the uh, trilogy of terror fetish uh, <laughs> for. Utility idol yeah. was in there or something, yeah. but it uh, wasn't. so it was nice seeing uh, Pazuzu there. Yeah, uh, and that statue comes to life later. Yes, it well, does. The well, the come snake to life. comes alive. Yeah. Side note: There's an Exorcist VR game, which I gotta have you play. It's oh, terrifying. No. It scared the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the end, you get to fight Pazuzu in like a monster form, and I was expecting it to look like the statue, and it just looks like a bat person. Oh, it with should no have been. Wings. I'm like, if what? it's a VR game, you'd be yeah. the dude who directed Zardoz, who directed part two, because he got chased from the theater at the <laughs> premiere by angry people. What if that's the VR game? Is you getting chased <laughs> to the streets? Um, what I like about the Jin is uh, he does have magical power. Like yeah. his powers are limited to the wishes, really. Mm -hmm. As outside of wishes, he has very limited powers. Like, he could shape shift, but he needs to physically rip a face Which off and wear it. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> like, that was yeah. the part that I didn't remember from the theater, and I was like, wow, what? Why? Yeah. Like, and I, I just love that he's like walking onto this campus, mm -hmm. like in his robes, and everyone's looking at him like, is that a fucking green guy? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> it's a thought. The hop so he, he rips the face off a dead guy. Oh, but before that, oh. the dude who looks like. Trey Parker, or Matt Stone, whichever yeah, one has yeah. the curly hair. Um, he's reading Psychotronic magazine, yeah. and a a jar of eyeballs is just awkwardly moved into yeah. the frame as like the first of our jump scares, and it's like, whoa, hey, okay, bye, and he goes into the thing. But there's a couple of these like really bad jump scares, like yeah. the one where the uh, she's talking to the the uh, the professor woman, yes. and a skeleton with a paper mache head just pops yeah. in, and there's a music singing. And she goes, "Oh hey, I just wanted to show you my skeleton mask." <laughs> Bye, and then it's never spoken or, or of when, again. Earlier, when Alex is looking at the gem, mm -hmm. her boss leaves, and then it's her alone, and then he's just back, and it's yeah. like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> uh, so it was a different time. This is another one of the Wishmaster just fucking with people. Mm -hmm. He's like, uh, he sees him ripping off the face. He's like, "Oh no!" He's like. Uh, am I right to assume that you wish this is this is something you wish not to see? And he's like, yeah, boom, instant blindness. That's and that was the thing that was like that's actually a pretty cool effect that they did where like the eyes kind of yeah. scrunched up. I thought that was cool. Yeah. So then we meet the Jin in his human form, Andrew Divov. Andrew yeah. Divov, yeah. who I said looked like Seth MacFarlane, but if he had seals <laughs> complexion, like he's got that face full of rock salt shot <laughs> cheeks thing going on. Good for him though. He was good. That voice is fantastic. His voice, um, it kind of remind me of uh, the way they do his voice. I'm sure there's other examples, but yeah. it remind me of like Bane from Dark Knight Rises. A little bit. Where like no matter where he is, his voice sounds like he's right in your mm -hmm. ear, which works more for this because yeah. he's a monster. He's like a magical character, mm -hmm. but his voice is so deep, and I love. He, his real voice and his gin voice aren't that much different. No, it's, he's not trying to hide it at this <laughs> yeah. point at all. So. Except for when he's angry, he like oh, it comes yeah. out a little bit. Run, insect. Run and tell those you will what you will. Tell them there is something loose in their city. 
something which feeds on wishes. Uh, so yeah, you, we skipped that a little bit, but mm. Earth, the, Alex meets this Persian history person, mm-hmm. and this is the weirdest cut in the movie to me. I don't know if you noticed this. So she's talking, she introduces herself. Yeah. They're at that theater, that play mm-hmm. thing. They walk to the right, and then it cross dissolves, and they're in the same location yes. at the same time. No passage of time, and I'm like, why was there a cross dissolve yeah, there? Th- like, that was weird, and I, I thought maybe I missed something, so yeah. I went back and I watched it again because I just posted on Facebook recently about like one of the worst edits is in Poltergeist. That yeah. one cut, and I was like, oh man, I should start making a list of all these cross dissolves yeah. and edits and transitions that make no sense whatsoever. Yeah, and it's not even like they're later in their conversation. Like no, they, they haven't just... left. It was it was weird. <laughs> in a movie that's like really that stuff like that stands out mm-hmm. because of how good everything else yeah. is. You're like. What was that uh, cut? <laughs> uh, so then as they're talking, mm-hmm. you get to see the Wishmaster is shopping for clothes. And I like to imagine he walked into that store with the bum clothes. And, and it was like, <laughs> but he, yeah, so it's like a pretty woman type situation. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to see them just trying on outfits. And uh, I, I have this question because he, he mentions wanting to bone someone mm-hmm. later or whatever. And yeah. then in the sequels, he talks about, but like, so is the djinn attracted to human women or is he just flirting to to gain their trust to get them to do a wish? Uh, Wouldn't he be into, like, a tentacle lady Yeah, man, well, I guess if you're that old and powerful, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, whatever. And then, so he, he gets his, uh, he puts on, he comes out of the thing yeah. in a suit. Yes. And he's wearing blue shirt, blue tie. Yeah. And I was like, is that because of the Aladdin genie? And his eyes are blue. And his too. eyes are blue yeah, too. We, I, when I watched it last night, my girlfriend pointed out he's like, he's got contact. Yeah, but blue. I was just like, do you think they did that because of the that's, Aladdin gene? I didn't think about that because you think they would make it green. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. But no, that's actually kind of. But funny. I was like, that would make more sense because it's like, what was the, that was the last thing that was genie related yeah. was in '93 to yeah, that. So yeah. you know. Um. So oh, well, except for Sinbad's Shazam. I oh, that's that right. Class. Yeah. Uh, so the the wish here is good, but mm-hmm. then your brain kicks in, and you go, "Wait a minute!" Yeah. So <laughs> she's like, "He's like, don't you wish that you were young forever?" And she's like, "Yes." And he turns her into a mannequin, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, I'm like, "Okay, clever." But then I'm just like, "Aren't her coworkers going to be like, hey, it's weird that that uh, employee left?" And then, then we got this mannequin that's going to be here yeah, looking she, beautiful forever. Yeah, she dressed up a mannequin to look exactly like her and then left her shift. Let's check the cameras. Like, yeah. like and instead, they're going to be like, yeah, instead you find out that they just put the mannequin in the back room. Can like, you imagine, no one look into this? Can you imagine the loss prevention guy that discovers that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, so he's on his mission to find her address because yeah. he doesn't have that magical power. Yeah, exactly. He goes to uh, get the address from the lieutenant. Uh, they're talking and the lieutenant's like, that guy over there, he always gets away with literally murder. Mm-hmm. I wish I had him dead to rights. And then? <laughs> so so and then the guy just starts murdering everyone. And not just murdering, he rips a fucking dude's I, That jaw was off. awesome. He grabs the guy's jaw and rips it off. And so it's, effortlessly too. Yeah, it like, just comes right off. And he looks like Alice Cooper in uh, Prince of Darkness, but they couldn't get Alex, Alice Cooper in Prince yeah. of Darkness, so they just got whoever that guy was. Yeah. And then like they all just start fucking opening <laughs> fire on him, and he's just taking bullets. And meanwhile, the jeans like going through the address yeah. book. I'm like, oh, yes, this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else in the office is like, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, then our next So wish. many things in this movie could have been solved if people just had peripheral vision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so our next cameo mm-hmm. is uh, Kane Hodder. Yes. Uh, and his, as... he gets two wishes. Yes. Kane Hodder's yeah. Jason. Okay, the multiple wishes for people, it's fine in this movie. Mm-hmm. But if I do Wishmaster 2, there's going to be a continuity error. Uh, so and I've he never wishes... seen 2, 3, or 4. I... There's one, don't say what it is, because okay. I want to review it, but there's right. one scene Okay, yeah, two. that's the only scene yeah. I know from 2. Uh, so Kane Hodder wishes the guy would leave, mm-hmm. and he's like, no, <laughs> his gin voice yeah. pops out. And then he goes, you'd have to go through me, and I'd love to see that. And Kane Hodder turns into a stained glass window. Yeah. And this is another thing where I'm like, Okay, we never got the scene where someone was like, hey, what happened to the door? Yeah. Why is there all this glass that looks that like a looks person? like a dude. Like, yeah. Because it would be cool if, like, the you know, the eyeball still blinked yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. But that was the only scene. That, yeah. When he turns into the stained glass window is cool. But when he walks through it, oh, I yeah. was super disappointed in that 
1997 yeah. CGI pieces. That's really like it was cool for the time. Yeah, I will say though they made that was a practical yeah. thing at mm -hmm. first because uh, we looked up the director a few years ago auctioned off a bunch of stuff. Oh really? Yeah, he auctioned off like uh, Vern Troyer's suit. He actually <laughs> auctioned off Vern Troyer. <laughs> Troyer. Hey, sorry uh, he died. The Ahura <laughs> Mazda statue, and then I saw the stained glass. Yeah. In my mind, I'm just like, where is the Jin's chair? That's the only oh, I would love yeah. to have that chair. Uh, so yeah, then then the boss gets two wishes, mm -hmm. and it's not for another season of Thunder and Paradise. No, it's uh, and he, the Hulk needs money, brother. Yeah, he, <laughs> he wants like a lamp to be more valuable, mm -hmm. and then he goes, "Oh, I would love a million dollars." He's gonna tell him where Alex is if he gets a million dollars. And this is the scene where you can tell that somebody who's into effects and who's a really big horror fan yeah. made this movie, because in. Another movie, they wouldn't have gone to this length for this joke. It would have been like, uh, it would have been something stupid like Leprechaun 2, and he's like, I wish I had all your gold, and yeah. then it's inside exactly, him, something yeah. like that. So um, he, he wishes to have a million dollars, and then they instantly cut to an elderly woman yeah. who's signing her life insurance. Now, do they do that at the airport? That's what it appeared to be, Maybe right? they did it in the 90s, I don't know. Because <laughs> I was like, that's a weird, I mean, I... I can see people last minute getting yeah. scared, but I, I've never seen a life insurance thing in an airport. So she signs it over and the, her benefactor is her son. <laughs> and then the very next shot is the plane exploding. It's not even the plane exploding, it's the plane flying and then it cuts to just a stock explosion. But we know. Yeah, yeah. Because we're film people. Yes, so <laughs> I get that super clever, probably my favorite wish yeah. thing. But then but, I'm thinking, I'm like, how did, so Nick does tell him where she is because yeah. he shows up at a basketball game. I'm like, how did that scene end? Because he's like, oh, you're going to get a million dollars. Just trust me. He's yeah. Like, does Nick know he's getting... Like, or it would be better if the gin waits around and like for weeks because they have to go through all yeah. the wreckage and, and the, the yeah, medical... Yeah, he would like, be the, like in the store. Yeah, and he's like, this dude won't leave. And he gets the phone call and he's like, oh no, my mom. And he's yeah. like, peace. And goes... <laughs> and then uh, skip it ahead when we see Nick again when there's a scene where all their souls are yeah. getting attacked. He's just still in his office looking at Dimes like, does he even know his mom died? No, it doesn't matter. So I thought point. that was weird. Look, if, I, if you had a million dollars, you could could buy so many moms. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, the djinn goes to the professor. He mm -hmm. like flirts with Alex's sister. Yeah. Uh, he borrows her cell phone, mm -hmm. goes to the Persian professor's house. Yeah. He does something weird. He's walking around her house by himself and there's mm -hmm. like a clock and then he just changes it for yeah. no reason. I think he was just having fun on set. <laughs> uh, so he collects all the souls that mm -hmm. made wishes. And then it cuts to the no eyes guy. Yeah. And I feel, so, it's, by the way, this whole movie is done in two days. Yes. The blind guy is in a mental institution. It's like, look, I get that maybe he said there was like a monster. <laughs> yeah. But someone saw him with eyes. And then, and he then had, all of a sudden he had no eyes. Yeah, or he has, a, I'm like, did no one try to do surgery to open that up? Like, and I said, him in a mental is genie shenanigans covered by your HMO? <laughs> you know, somewhere on there, they were like, well, I'm sorry, buddy. Magical creatures are not. <laughs> if you got gored by a unicorn, we would help you. He's, <laughs> the thing is, I know he was in like the corner, but I assume he's in a medical facility. Yeah. And someone was like, oh my God, this guy's, let's, let's try to. They threw him in a mental yes. institution. <laughs> American healthcare. <laughs> yeah. uh, so then Alex shows up to mm -hmm. talk to the professor. And I love this scene because the gin is the professor. Yeah, and she's actually a really good actress. And I don't know what I knew her from. I, I've seen her in, in other things. Yeah. But their interaction where. Yeah. Like, she's a real. Like, she's really good in this scene. She's great as yeah. the gin. She's all like. It's the gin is trying to trick Alex. She's like, "Hey, can I get you like any coffee, any yeah. drink? Can I get you this? Can I get you that?" So why do you keep trying to give me things? <laughs> like, are you hungry? I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. I'm not. Why do you keep trying to do things for me? Uh, then she reveals herself yeah. as the gin, mm -hmm. and then you find out that. But she also goes on this megalomaniacal rant yeah. <laughs> about like you know that that your pea brains wouldn't understand this creature who walked on the heavens and all this yeah. kind of stuff, and it's just like wow, this I really yeah. like this. Like she's gloating. She sounds the, like a comic book villain. Yeah, you know, the gin is gloating because no one believes in magic, so yeah. he's like free to do whatever mm -hmm. he wants. So he reveals himself as the gin. Bright daylight, brightly lit, still yeah. looks great, mm -hmm. and it's actually. Because normally you'd want to, and they do it throughout the movie, put him in something dark. But yeah. it's actually kind of cool to see 
something that shouldn't be in yeah. that environment. And I like and looks so good. I like the armor that he wears too because it reminds me of the '92 Bram Stoker's Dracula yeah, yeah, the, costume the, the, the a little red, bit. Like, yeah, suit, yeah, or the uh, the cell. The yeah, Jennifer yeah. J Lo. J Lo. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to remember what Jennifer it was. Uh, and uh, that scene's pretty funny. He talks about he he was showing up there earlier, mm -hmm. showed the old lady his face, and he's like, I just. Said, well, do you wish to be released or whatever? He yeah. did the release. She thing. opens the door and like the old yeah. lady's just laying there on her bed, like well, yeah, her the she, face. Ripped. She doesn't even open the door. He's like, I had to take her face, and we could just be like, all right, yeah. that's what he does. But no, the movie's like, no, we gotta it. show you guys. <laughs> There's this dead lady. <laughs> uh, so apparently, the djinn can mm -hmm. give out free wishes. Yeah. Because I think he is, I think whoever the council of Jin were, mm -hmm. they were like, look, they're all going to say kill you on the first yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I wish he could blow your brains out. And he shoots his brains. And yeah, top of his head explodes. Regenerates, but it's the funniest. First off, he's funny when he's in his human form, mm -hmm. telling, saying what he did. Yeah. He's like, she got that right hysterical. <laughs> but then it's funny. He goes, just play the clip what he says. Yeah. I want you to destroy yourself. Blow your brains out. Right now. Very well. <gasps> that which is eternal cannot die. But if it's any consolation, sweet Alex, that hurt like hell. So he feels pain. Yeah, we know exactly. that. Uh, so she wishes to get to know him, mm -hmm. and she goes into the red gem, which you pointed out. Which looks out. like the Predator 2 hallways. Yeah, it's yeah. only red instead of, like, yellow. Exactly. Which, by the way, the new Predator movie, and even the AVP movies, why do they never look like the Predator 2 ship? They always look like this gray generic gonna, spaceship. Because, because producers are like, we're going to do our own thing. We're going to put our own stamp on this, and, yeah. and you have diminishing returns each time. Yeah. They're like, Predator, oh man, that movie was great. Predator yeah. 2... Okay. But like, we saw the Predator 2 ship, just make it look like that. No, no, no. <sighs> Anyway. Uh, Movies are terrible. So right? she goes in, he's like, he's, she's like, let me get to know you. And he's like, I'm despair. It's like, yeah. all right. Yeah. And she's bragging, he's showing like everyone. She's being, getting like, chased apart. by that like uh, puppet which, thing. Which for me, I'm like, did Kane be work on Hellraiser 4? Yes, that's they the did? same thing I thought of. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Well, if they did, because I'm like, because that looks like the chattering dog from yeah, Hellraiser yep. 4. I'm like, Mixed okay. with the thanks killing turkey. <laughs> <laughs> but she has to keep running back down the same hallways yeah. each time they put the camera in a different place. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, oh boy. And then uh, he like threatens to get her sister. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I wish I was in my apartment without you. Yeah. Uh, and then she heads to the, so Beaumont, the Robert Englund mm -hmm. character, he's having a party. Yeah. Which was to celebrate his statue, but instead of canceling the party. Yeah, well, party. you know, <laughs> hey, my, and my assistant died. This is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah. It, by the way, two days. Yeah. It's only two days. Body's not even cold. Well, because it's still mashed into the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> so she drives to the party. Uh, oh, the gin knows the phrase going my way. Yes, exactly. Uh, she gets to the party. She has help from the security guard, mm -hmm. which is Tony Todd. Tony Todd, the candy man. And, and the reverse flash. And the reverse flash. Yeah. What? No, no, he's uh, Zoom. He's Zoom. the voice of yes, Zoom. Yes, he's the voice of Zoom. So he... Cut that out so I know what I'm talking about. No, leave it <laughs> uh, He confronts the Wishmaster and he, he gives himself a first and last name, which is yes. really funny. He's like, I'm Johnny Valentine. I am going through that door and you will not stop me. Is that perfectly clear, doorman? Door. The name is Valentine. Johnny Valentine. And that's what I thought. I was like, is that his given Christian name? Because if your name is Johnny Valentine, your choices in life are very limited if I'm that's like, your actual name. Was was Tony Todd like, I don't want to be a nameless security guard. I yeah. want to have a name. And they're like, what do you want your name to be? Johnny, Johnny Val Valentine. Okay. And they're like, oh, no. Right, this, this is one of the weaker, weaker wishes. Yeah. He, like, he tries to like negotiate with the guy. And he's like, wouldn't you like to escape? And yeah. he's like, yeah. And then it cuts to him. In a tank with a straight and he, jacket. And he's like, Houdini did it in two minutes. Yeah, you so know? his wish is he would like to escape. And I guess if you're in a tank, I would also like to escape. Now imagine also, say you're leaving the party because your babysitter has to get out of there at 10. Yeah. And there's just a dead black man <laughs> in blocking your car in a turn of the century escape artist <laughs> tank. And you're like, like, I don't remember that. People in the Hollywood Hills are weird. <laughs> is, that, is that the 
guy from uh... Is that Johnny Valentine? Not Johnny Valentine. <laughs> is, that the, is that the Rocket Man from The Rock? Yeah. <laughs> This <laughs> the obituary. Johnny yeah. Valentine died in old timey magician. Yeah, acts. and they're like, "What is?" <laughs> uh, so the final big wish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wishmaster's there. He's yeah. like, he's everyone just loves this guy. He shows up to the party after Alex, yeah. and everyone already loves him. Yeah, uh, he can teleport now. Apparently, yeah, it's a new a, power. I guess once he meets her, he can teleport. Because the writer went, how do we get him there? Oh, he's just there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think once he met her and she got him wishing, that opened some psychic uh, connection. Okay. Uh, so he's there. And it's like, explained in the novelization. Yeah. <laughs> so Robert Englund's like, oh my God, I had this party. People talked about it for years. He's like, I knew a party that went down in mm. history. <laughs> I'd like to have one of those. Which isn't a wish. No. He just said, I'd love to have them. I'm like, that's not really a wish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless... It gives the gin carte blanche to do whatever he wants. And it just turns into a crazy yeah. orgy of gore effects. Now, I, I wrote in my notes that like, it reminded me of the nightclub scene from Hellraiser 3. But where, better. But better. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do like that scene in, night, uh, in Hellraiser 3 mm-hmm. when Pinhead is just unleashed and he yeah. can do whatever he yep. wants. Like that scene has got like the CDs going yeah. in the head, yep. the chains ripping people out. Uh, but this one is like that times ten. The, yeah, just like yeah. people are getting attacked. Like I said, the piano. Yeah. The wires come out and get the guy. Yeah. Uh, the There's the uh, the dude gets like the p pia- the bow of the violin like in his face yeah. and is like chopping it I, up. I love at uh, when the gin confronts Alex. She walks down a hallway and there's just a guy upside down with tentacles coming yeah. out of his neck. I'm like, <laughs> but the scene there's dialogue that happens in front of this upside down body, and you which can, is tentacles. The audio- the audio is great in this. You can kind of hear it like going. Yeah. In the back. A, and I just imagine there's a dude under the floor with the thing, and he's like, "We we're not cutting. All right." <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is like, I think this is like the coolest part of this. Yeah. The statues come. And this alive. is the thing. I didn't remember this part, and yeah. I don't know why I didn't remember this part because when I was watching, I was like, "Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. Like, why? This is so cool." Yeah. He's got. That Robert England's character collects antiquities. Yes, and he's got all this stuff in his in his house, uh, and he has all these statues like Roman and and Grecian and, like, and like Japanese, and they're like all like Neptune. Yeah. Or, so when she yeah. she turns a corner, and there's all these statues with weapons. And she's like, mm, and she's slowly <laughs> walking down. Because if I was making this movie, she would have seen that and just went, nope, and then gone back the way she came. So well, she, back the way she came was Neptune with well, the trident. Well, hey, you know. He's like, he disappears, and I like to imagine he's trying to get the trident out of the yeah. wall. He's like, or he's either. trying to save Johnny Valentine. He's like, I'm sorry my water did this to you, Johnny Valentine. Johnny Valentine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so there's like these ancient warrior yeah. statues, it's like a ninja samurai, one that kind of looks like a genie, mm-hmm. I don't know what it was. But they all like, they, they're really cool because they look like yeah. they're actually cut from marble and stone. Yeah, yeah. And there was all, we watched the making of, and there's all these dudes inside these things, yeah. and they all have weapons, and they're all coming out and alive and doing yeah. cool stuff They look now. really good, like, um, they're clearly guys just standing there, yeah. because I don't think you could put those suits on no. mannequins. And they look well, they great. blow them up though. They, they show do the later thing where they on, blow yeah. them up. Yeah, but like they look great in the first like wide shot. But mm-hmm. like when I watched it last night, we, we noticed that uh, the big fat one. Yeah, like right before the shot cuts, you start to see him like lean forward because <laughs> those suits are heavy. Yeah, and there's there's not enough uh, air uh, holes in them. And they're cool. They take out a bunch of security guards mm-hmm. who just showed up. They kill uh, uh, they kill the other K and B guy too. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, not Nicotero uh, Burger. Uh, yeah, they kill Burger. He gets his face mashed yeah. with a and mace. And if you watch the behind the scenes, you see he's holding. His his own prop yeah. head to get that. But there are direct there's a direct lineage between them and <laughs> old Chief Woodenhead from Creep Show 2. Yes. Which the they also best did. Thing in Creep yeah, Show exactly. Two, besides the clearly white guy who was in Justice League, yeah. uh, being a Native American. Other than that, great the the Oh yeah. <laughs> but no, that's my favorite scene of that movie. But you can yeah. tell that they they brought that idea over yeah. to this. And then but then it goes a little far. With Jack the Ripper, <laughs> yeah, they're in front of a paint, and like everything looks pretty good in this. Mm-hmm. There's this cheesy painting of like Jack the Ripper, and then the actor comes out of the painting, I'm and like, he's got the big like uh, yeah. chi- uh, children under the stairs for people under yeah. the stairs. He looks like he, Mr. Hyde, really, a little but bit. I yeah, assume it's Jack the Ripper, and he just starts hacking into the security guy. So yeah, that went a little far, but then mm-hmm. it leads to the uh, finale. Yes, uh, the Jin has her sister locked in a painting that's mm-hmm. on fire. 
called Sister, Why Have You Forsaken yeah. Me? <laughs> uh, and this is really, really clever because mm -hmm. she doesn't have magic. Yeah. She's like, oh, my final wish. And she's like, oh, I wish Mickey Torelli or Joe Pilato yeah. hadn't been drinking And it the just job. cuts back to these shots of her when she was reading the paper earlier. Yeah. All the shots of the paper. So it goes, oh, this is how yeah. I do this. So she wishes that he wasn't drinking on the job, yeah. which and George Romero probably said many a times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it undoes everything. Yeah. So he I gets. I mean, technically he did grant the wish he should free the world, but whatever. Yeah. But yeah, he like gets sucked into it mm -hmm. and then time gets rewritten but then it's confusing it's like does she have the memories from the previous timeline yeah because it cuts back to her everything's good mm -hmm. now and she's flirting with the guy they're dating which is what i said to you i was like do you think this whole thing was that dude's wish he's like <laughs> the guy who died in the lab explosion he's like oh i wish that uh you know she would go out on a date with me so there's this this gin long con for that and at the end he's like all right that's one way you can see it but yeah, yeah it's like, <laughs> i guess she like does have the memories yeah there would be no reason mm -hmm. for her to have that character arc. yeah uh but i love because every generate every one of these movies had to have a one-liner mm -hmm. and she, hey, this one's actually pretty good she's like wish you never met me and i'm like all right uh, that's funny uh, so yeah, that's the movie. Yeah, um, that's the... <laughs> why, like, this should have been big. No, exactly, and it's like, because I'm, I'm an old man, I'm 38 years old, yeah. and there was this weird period of time where, like, Dr. Giggles was, like, the last horror movie that came out, then everything yeah. else was on video, then Scream came out, and it was huge. Yeah. Like, even awesome stuff, like, a year before this was Tales from the Crypt Demon Night. Yeah. Nobody cared about that movie. Yeah. Scream made everything, like, Scream's good. You know, yeah. Scream is what it is. Scream is yeah. It's but it, it's it's ironic and it flips all the old tropes on their yeah. head. And then nobody wanted stuff like this anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that sucks because I was just like when you said, Oh, we're gonna watch Witchmaster, I was like, oh, I haven't seen that since I was little and whatever. Yeah. And I was like, This is great. Like nitpicking aside, because yeah, we're yeah. we're idiots on the I internet. I would love like a reboot of this. I something. could yeah, I could totally see this it being could be rebooted. A different gin. It doesn't have yeah, to be the same you know. Gin, like. It could be it could be a woman this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I assume there's gin ladies. Uh well, I won't know that until Wishmaster 4, which is called The Prophecy Fulfilled. And I think there's multiple gin in that, so oh, I'll see if there's no. any gin ladies in that. We're all going to need more gin to yeah. watch that movie. <laughs> so that was Wishmaster. It's great. I recommend coming I to Hack the Movies video. It's a new store, totally original store. Totally original. Under new management. Uh, Hack the Movies <laughs> video, I'm picking it up. And uh, dude, did you ever see my Milton bobblehead? Oh, from Office Space? Yeah, oh, oh. my God, you broke oh, it. Oh my God. I waited so many years for this Milton bobblehead. Oh my oh, God, what was what's that? this? Oh, a little red ruby, like the movie we just watched. Oh my God, well that is just <laughs> clever and ironic, like it, the wishes in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> it would be pretty yeah. funny if I like, <laughs> Rub this and <laughs> breathe on it. <laughs> oh my god! All I do is gin, 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 no matter what. Got witches on my mind, I can never grant enough. And every time I step in the building, everybody's hands go up. And they stay there. Oh my god, Newt! There's a gin in the store! Oh, it's the one from the AVGN episode. I remember that episode. No, no, it's not the AVGN genie. It's the Hack the Movies gin. It's completely original, much like Hack the Movies video. It's not based on anything. It's an original character. Do not steal. It's Hack the, the Hack the Movies, the movies gin. gin. Look, he's green, not blue. Oh, that is completely original and under new management, yeah. like Hack the Movie video. Yes. Anyway, gin, what do you want? I'm itching to grant some wishes. Uh, I guess if I have to make a wish, I should be really careful about what I wish for. Like, yeah. if, I, if I wish that you and I would have done this before, we'll wind up in, like, dinosaur times, and that's yeah. stupid. Uh, or if I wish that I had a hot body, I'll catch on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I really wish that I got to see the Snyder Cut. Of Justice League? Of Justice League. Oh, my God. Yeah, can you grant that wish, Jin? That wish is the ish. Oh, my God, it's there. Oh, but it's the D Snyder Cut. Oh, that backfired. Actually. Actually, it can't be worse than the Joss Whedon one. I would have loved to find yeah, me too. Hey, Jin, I know you tried to be evil, but that's actually pretty- This is actually going to be kind of cool, yeah. It's actually pretty entertaining. <laughs> All right. We uh, should review uh, Strangeland. <laughs> we should. I'm going to yeah. finally watch that. Thanks, Jin. Yeah. Hey, Jin, I wish that Wishmaster was 
a bigger movie. Like the biggest movie ever. I wish it was a smash hit and a literal blockbuster. Heads up. You hear that? Yeah, it's this might have backfired on us. Huh. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode of Hack the Movies. It doesn't really have a name, it's just a review. I uh, just want to thank you guys for watching and all the new subscribers and uh, new viewers lately. It's been uh, really great. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. We're doing... I'm going to do all the Wishmaster movies. Uh, hopefully some of the rental review guys will be in those. And I got some other videos coming up. That should be pretty good. And if you were on Patreon, you would have known about this video coming out. Because I've been posting a little behind the scenes stuff. So let me know what you think of this oh. new... Oh, Kieran, you're not... You're not in this yet. I'm doing my sign off for the video. We, we didn't shoot Wishmaster 2 yet. Get out. Okay, so thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out Patreon. Check out my merch store. Thanks for everyone who bought my merch when I did the promo code. I might do new promo codes in the future. And uh, remember, that OnlyFans is just waiting for you. It's just waiting for you. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Bye.